Hey guys, it's uh, Marshall with you again. Uh, this time we're going to be doing a walkthrough for the Legend Spawn plugin. This is a spawning system for Neverwinter Nights 2. So what I've got here is the um, the install uh, setup program. I'm just going to run through that. And uh, like all of the uh, Legends plugins, uh, the actual files do come with it separately. So if you uh, don't want to run the uh, the actual uh, installer, you can put these files in the in the appropriate locations by hand, uh, like Spawn DLL will go in your plugins folder, and uh, ERF can be stored anywhere, your mod in a mod folder, and so on and so forth. Um, now, just before I continue, I'm just going to turn this little thing off here so it doesn't annoy me too much. There we go. And, uh, yeah, so, um, again, with this walkthrough, I'm not going to touch on every single option that the Spawn plugin has to offer, so you're going to want to take a look at the manual uh, at, certain, at some point, and it'll explain a little bit more. So we'll finish this and fire up the tool set. There we go. So, uh, yeah, as I was mentioning, the, uh, the manual will describe... Um, you know more of the uh, the features that are available. I'm going to go through a number of them, but not necessarily all of them. So um, now that our spawn plug is installed, we'll wait for our tool set to load up. Now again, the same as what I did in a crafting plugin, I did um, pre-set up a module because I don't I'm I get tired looking at the little. Uh, the little uh, green fields. <clears throat> so I've uh, created this little empty module here and it's got a little area and uh, this area was created, uh, I found it on the vault, it was created by uh, Camel or Kamal, I I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, it, it's Camel with a K. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. Uh, it could be Kamal, I'm not sure. And I do apologize if I've got it wrong, but uh, he's created uh, many areas um, for random encounters and I've selected this forest deep uh, one for this demonstration and uh, he's done some fantastic work so you definitely check out his works but I'm going to use that for this demo so the first thing we're going to want to do uh, now that we're in here is uh, to check to see if our plugin actually registered and as you can see there's a legends master configurator here and a legend spawn plugin here so that means that that has worked correctly so that's what we want to see Next thing we want to do is import the resources into our module. And, and just to confirm, just to show, there are, there are no existing scripts, campaign or otherwise. Uh, just this one little area in here, nothing else. So we'll import our, our scripts. And by default, in your My Documents folder, Neverwinter Nights, there's an ERF and a leg underscore spawn ERF file. So import that and then you can check and you can see that all the scripts and whatnot are there. Uh, so now that we've got our uh, ERF imported we are ready to fire up the master configurator. So we'll fire that up and it looks like this. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to notice is that spawn plugin is available and we're going to want to activate that. Uh, the campaign level objects is something new for version 142. This is uh, support for scripts in uh, a campaign folder instead of just like your module directory. You can have uh, your scripts and whatnot be created and modified and searched for in the campaign folder as well if you if you tell uh, the system that you're using that. Uh, also you'll notice a couple of buttons here for uh, update all area scripts and update module scripts. We'll get into that in a sec. Uh, database options. Now this is a generic master configurator for all uh, Legends plugins. So some of the Legends plugins do use NWNX in a MySQL database backend. The Spawn plugin does not. So you don't actually need to fill any of this in or even worry about the whole database section. That's for other plugins. If you've got other plugins that are using them and the stuff is already here, great. Don't worry about it for our spawning, but uh, for, for this plugin we don't need to worry about that. We do, however, want to ensure that our areas have the appropriate scripts in them. Each area in your module is going to need an on-client enter script and an on-exit uh, script. Now, of course, many modules will already have uh, scripts in these to, to, to perform tasks. 
uh, you're going to want to go ahead and use this button regardless uh, of what you have there. I know in the past versions of the configurator you had to be careful by using this button. That's no longer an issue. Uh, what will happen now is if your area does not have any scripts in those events, it'll put some appropriate scripts there. However, if your uh, module has pre-existing scripts, what happens when you click this button is those scripts will get copied and the copies then will become uh, the actual script. Uh, but those copies will then be modified by the configurator and it will inject code where it needs to go to do what it needs to do without interfering with your existing functionality. So you're going to want to do this uh, for all your areas regardless. So we're going to do that. Actually we're not going to do that yet. We're just going to click finish on this. So make sure we can save our settings. Yeah, that looks good. Now we're going to update our areas. And what it does is it'll actually open each area, update it, and then resave it. So it can take a couple of minutes and then it lets you know when it's done. And we'll look at the other option. This one is update module scripts. Some Legends plugins also require the use of module scripts. Um, the spawning plugin does not, so you don't even need to worry about this button for this, but other plugins will. It's always a good idea to press this button anyway, and uh, it's the same idea. If there's no script in place, it'll put one there, and if there is a script in place, it'll make a copy of it and modify the copy and use that. So uh, you, it's a good idea to, to do that whenever you're installing a new module, or a new plugin, sorry. And we'll go back and look at our area. And we'll see a real quick look here. Pull up its properties for this area. And we'll see that it's placed two scripts. Now of course again if there were if there was a script here already or here, it would get copied, modified, and then a new script would be put in place. The the script name would be the same as the original name with an LG underscore in front of it. So Oh, so you know where your scripts are going. And we'll close this for a second, so we're not done configuring. The next step in configuration is we're going to actually fire up the spawn plugin itself. Go into File and Configuration, and we'll look at spawn frequencies. Uh, when we're creating spawns for creatures and placeable objects, we can allow the system to choose uh, creatures or placeables based on their frequency. This is basically a percentage chance of uh, when something will spawn. So if we have two or three uh, creatures, for example, in our spawn point, and you know two of them are set to common, one of them is set to rare, this is the percentage chance that the system will select that that creature. And you can see that a little bit more as we as we progress. You can leave the default numbers as is, um, but you definitely want to come in here, look at the numbers, and hit finish so it saves the, the configuration. So we'll hit finish. And as always, whenever we make configuration changes, we're going to compile all of our scripts. Now again, you can do this with whatever compiler you want. That's why we have to do it by hand, because there are more than one compiler out there. So you can choose to use whatever compiler you want. Just compile after you do those configuration changes. Now we are pretty much ready to go. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up your area where you're going to do uh, spawning. Now you have to do one thing to your areas uh, where you want the spawn plugin to actually function. In your waypoints you will find a Mr. HB Man uh, waypoint. Place him in each area, just one in every area, uh, where you want spawning to occur. And he can go away. And all you have to do to him is modify his properties and change his tag. His tag needs to match what your area's tag is. So choose your area, grab its tag, and then choose your waypoint and modify this part of the tag like so. That's it. You're done with him. Now your area is ready and ready to start spawning creatures. So we're gonna start our guys down here and 
we'll start our creatures up on this end of the area because we don't want to spawn, uh, land right in them when we start the uh, module. So the first thing we're going to do is the simplest form of spawning. We're just going to select a creature and have the system spawn him. So in order to do that, we're going to need a creature to begin with. So we're going to start with, um, we're going to do some undead in this one. Let's start with a zombie. And what you need to do is create a copy of your zombie. And there he is. And that's it. Just create a copy of your zombie. Next. Uh, actually, I'm going to need that for another minute. Next, you come in here and you're going to choose a waypoint. Now, you'll notice that there are two spawning waypoints. There's leg spawn system waypoint and leg spawn systems non-mob waypoint. There is virtually no difference between these two other than the color of the spawn point. Um, you can use whatever one you want, just just as long as you're using one of them. Uh, the reason why I do this is because uh, when I choose this one for creatures, you'll notice that the waypoint flag is blue, and when I choose this one for creatures, it's red. That's how I know which ones are placeables and which ones are creatures. So we're going to do a creature one, so I'm going to choose this and place it, just like that. And there's our creature waypoint. And of course we're going to spawn our zombie on this. So all you have to do is have your waypoint in a position where you like the zombie to appear. And that looks good. Then go plugins, spawn plugin, file, edit, waypoint instance. And you'll see the configuration screen. This is where you'll do most of your work um, with, the, uh, with the actual plugin. So the first thing you're going to want to do is notice that the spawner type is creature or placeable. Of course this is going to be creatures in the spawning point and we're going to pull down our pull down menu and see zombie. So we'll choose him. We'll not worry about frequency or quantity right now. They'll default on their own for now. Hit add. And you'll see that the zombie gets added to the list right here. Next we're going to look down here and what we're interested in is minimum respawn minutes. We're going to set that to 2. Maximum respawn minutes set that to 2. This is basically the number of minutes um, that will pass after uh, the creature dies or is despawned before he'll respawn again. Um, it'll just select a random number of minutes in between these two values. So that's it. The next thing we do is hit update scripts and yes and OK and finish. Now you're probably asking yourself what did that update scripts thing do? And I'm going to show you exactly what that did. Because in previous uh, Legends plugins, you've always had to make manual script changes to Creatures AI. You don't actually have to do that anymore. So when we take a look at our original zombie here, if we look at his scripts, the on death script is this stock NWC2 default 7 script. Okay. Now if this was a custom creature in our world, this could be anything. It could be our custom death script. It could be whatever we want. We'll take a quick look at it and open it up. And we'll see, you know, this is the default death script. However, in our zombie, what has happened because of that update scripts button, the NWC2 default 7 has been copied and the name is now LG underscore DTH and inside that code you'll notice this has been added to the code uh, auto generated by legend spawn script and execute script like all master death and what this will allow you to not have to worry about modifying scripts by hand it'll do it for you automatically so whenever you add new creatures um, you're definitely going to want to hit that update scripts button. So I'll get rid of these. And that's it. We're done. This zombie is ready to go. Let's uh, go in game and take a look.